It's that time of the year when people will be sneezing and coughing because of the seasonal influenza. Although some may experience mild sickness leading to a few days of sometimes well-deserved bed rest, others may require hospitalization due to severe illness from flu. At times, the flu, in fact, can even lead to death. To prevent that, in fact, we're often told to get the annual flu jab, and perhaps it's time for that conversation. So let's bring in our guest, Professor Cheryl Cohen, is the head of the Center for Respiratory Diseases and Meningitis with the National Institute for Communicable Diseases. Prof, always great to see you. Thanks very much indeed for making time to speak to us. And yeah, I'm sometimes quite confused about where to begin given the different kind of ideas we've heard around flu. So perhaps let's start here. During COVID-19, part of the unintended benefits was that we saw much fewer people, uh, fewer yeah, individuals catching the flu because of those non-pharmaceutical interventions helping us curb the spread of something like influenza. As we stand in 2024, do we have any signal about how severe this flu season is likely to get? Yeah, so, so, so you're absolutely right. Um, we learned a lot about flu and other respiratory diseases during COVID, in fact. We learned that if we lock down and if we all wear masks and we wash our hands, we can actually stop the transmission of those viruses. And in fact, in 2020 and into 2021, some of those viruses really went away. Um, what we saw after COVID, however, was that um, as soon as we relaxed the interventions, those viruses went up again. And in fact, often we saw them circulating out of the season and quite big uh, seasons. Um, and what we see now is that really since last year, these viruses have now stabilized. So we're now seeing a, a much more typical picture of what we used to see before COVID, um, which really means that, that the, the influenza virus is expected to circulate in the winter as it does every year. Um, and there's no real concern concern about a more severe season, although I will say influenza is one of those viruses that, that changes a lot, a bit like COVID was in the beginning. So mm. influenza is a virus that is constantly evolving. And so sometimes we do have a more severe season and sometimes a milder season, but it's very hard to predict in advance what, what it will be this year. Yeah, and what people sometimes miss um, is that the flu actually claims a lot of lives in South Africa annually. What do those numbers look like? So, so in South Africa, we estimate that about 11,000 people will die every year of influenza and tens of thousands of people get admitted to, you know, even hundreds of thousands get admitted to hospital each year. And, and what's really important is that many of those people will never have a flu test. So they won't know that they had flu necessarily because doctors certainly uh, in many hospitals don't necessarily test for the flu. But when we monitor through our surveillance, we, we know that there's actually a massive uh, burden of disease. And that's why it's really important important, as you said in your introduction, for people to get the flu vaccine now before the season. And, and, and it's really particularly people who have those high risk conditions that put them at risk of getting admitted to hospital or even dying, like the elderly, like people with underlying illness, heart disease, lung disease, people living with HIV or tuberculosis, pregnant people. These are the people who really should be going to the clinic now. It's free of charge to those groups, in fact, to get their vaccines before the season starts and to really protect themselves. Yeah, you know, I never thought I'd ever say this in my broadcasting career, but conversations around vaccines have become incredibly contentious, and that's for obvious reasons around COVID-19. As the NICD, how concerned are you that, you know, the overflow of that sentiment from the pandemic may effectively affect how people see every vaccine and not just the COVID vaccine? So I think that's a real, real concern. And I think the issues around COVID really, really hurt the, the public uh, perception of these vaccines. And we see it with the flu vaccine that the uptake of the vaccine is lower now than it was uh, before the the pandemic and i think it's really important that people don't confuse the different products you know the flu vaccine has been around for many many years and it is well demonstrated to protect people at risk against those severe consequences and it's really important not to to conflate the, the issues also to know it's a very safe vaccine as i said it's been around used for many many years i had my own shot just this week um you know it's safe and it's effective um and and it's really important for people to distinguish between the the different jabs and even the COVID vaccine you know, it has, has its place um, as well. But of course, a lot of damage has been done and we need to do a lot of work to improve 
people's trust uh, in, in vaccines and, and knowing the right place in which to, to use them. Right. And I suppose this is an opportunity to do exactly that. Um, if I do get my vaccine for the flu, what are typically some of the signs I should be feeling in my body? You know, with COVID-19, for example, we were warned of feeling a bit of the symptoms that are associated with COVID. Is that the same with this vaccine? Yeah, so, so remember the COVID vaccine, especially the Pfizer shot, is, is one of the most reactogenic vaccines. So, so the mRNA vaccines really can make you feel quite sick. Mm. The flu vaccine shouldn't make you feel as bad, but obviously it's an injection. Often you feel a bit of pain at the site of the injection. This is a killed vaccine, so there's no actual virus in it, ju just really the surface structures of the virus to, to train your immune response. So you, you, you can have uh, pain and, and it very occasionally you might have a bit of fever or more sustained effects but it shouldn't be nearly as severe as, as the symptoms you get from the Pfizer shot. Uh, one of the big defining characteristics of those mRNA COVID vaccines is that they have a much more severe side effect profile than, than the other vaccines like flu. So it shouldn't be nearly as bad as your COVID shot but you might have a sore arm which is not unexpected and you might feel a bit off for a day or two but, but severe symptoms, severe side effects are very uncommon with the flu vaccine which is given to millions, hundreds of millions of people every year really with, with very few uh, severe side Effects. Yeah, for sure. If you're not necessarily uh, injecting the flu itself, as would be the case during COVID, and I'm not saying people were given out COVID, but you know what I mean, right? Um, at a molecular level, what's actually taking place there? Perhaps I think that might also help put people who are worried at ease. What is being injected and what does it do to my immune system in order to prepare it for the flu? Yeah, so, so the way your body protects itself against infection is by making um, certain sort of soldier molecules called antibodies that fight against the, the virus in this case. And those antibodies are very, very specific. So they're very specifically directed at certain structures on the surface of the infectious agent and they essentially block it from attaching and causing disease. In the vaccine, there, there are proteins or, or structures that... that uh, you know, that represent the, the important parts of the virus that co allows it to make you ill. And so um, it, it allows your body to make a very specific response so that if you see the real virus, it'll block it. But it's not, it's not as if there's any live virus in the vaccine. There are, mm. there are just the, the molecules that make up the surface structure. So your body recognizes that structure. Um, when, when it sees it. And it's actually a very specific and precise thing. And also your body's doing it all the time against other, you know, all the time our bodies are exposed to different uh, proteins in the environment and your immune system is responding to them. So it, it's something, it's a normal part of keeping a person healthy. We're just targeting it to make you specifically protected against that virus. Yeah. And of course, Prof, you must have heard of the sentiment out there around how we should be responding to this flu season. There is a narrative making the rounds that actually you're better off just taking a lie down in bed, resting your flu through, then uh, medicating and taking things like vaccine. You know, people talk about training your immune system to be able to respond to such infections on its own. How much credence is there to that kind of thinking? Yeah, I think I think for flu that kind of thinking really doesn't make sense. There's no benefit to, to to catching the flu in terms of your immune system. All of us have had many flu infections over the life course already. In fact, so our immune system uh, know, knows flu more generally. The the vaccine is really helping you protect against this year's uh, flu strain. And I think again we have to remember. Um, flu is not necessarily a mild illness. So you're describing a situation where you feel a bit off and you stay on from work, but in a significant proportion of people, it, it may be much more severe. You may end up in hospital. You could even die. And, and also, especially if you have underlying conditions, flu is, is the most common thing that could set that off. So if you have a weak heart, you end up in heart failure, you, you could end up in hospital taking medication. So, so there are much more severe consequences that, that could happen. And, and of course, even healthy people occasionally can, can also get, get more severe illness and be admitted to hospital, even people without underlying conditions. So, yeah. so I think it's never the argument, um, you know, it's good to, to, be, to be sick and just it, it boosts your immune system. I think that's not supported by the science. Right, loud and clear. Speaking about severe illness, there's a lot of reporting around RSV. I'm not going to even attempt saying the full scientific term. You'll help us with that. But apparently that's, um, you know, uh, seemingly a bit more prevalent in our society, uh, at least for people who are experiencing a bit more severe illness. Tell us a bit more about RSV and what to look out for. So 
RSV is, 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 is the, the short summary for a, a virus called respiratory syncytial virus. Right. And it's actually a really important virus. This is the commonest cause of pneumonia in children globally and in South Africa. And pneumonia is the commonest cause of death in young children in South Africa. So this is a really, really important virus globally. And, and right now we're in the RSV season and it's the peak of the season. So there's a lot of RSV around. And if you go to any hospital in South Africa, in, in the ICU, you'll see a lot of little babies babies that are in ICU and ventilators from, from RSV. So it's a very important virus. In fact, there's been a major breakthrough globally um, where, where last year the first products to prevent this disease in young children were actually launched. There's now a vaccine you can give to pregnant women and also another uh, drug called a monoclonal antibody, which you give as an injection at birth that protects the baby for the first few months of life when they're very vulnerable. So it's very, very exciting time. Those products aren't yet available in, in low and middle income countries, but certainly we are hoping in the next few years that these types of products would actually become available in South Africa, which would protect young babies from, as, as what I've said, is one of the commonest causes of, of death in South Africa. So it's an important virus, and I think there's a lot of hope in the next few years that we could have these prevention technologies in our country and be, be saving the lives and preventing hospitalizations in, in babies um, going forward. Crystal clear as always. Professor Sharon Cohen, we appreciate your time on the SABC. Thanks very much indeed for speaking to us.